Hello everyone, this is International Master Mark Esserman and today I'd like to show you a game that I played when I was 16 years old. Um, I wasn't even a master at the time and it was a game that was very inspiring for me to become a better chess player and I, I hope it's inspiring for you as well. So when we're learning chess we learn uh, the basic rules, put your pieces in the center, develop, castle, and um, but sometimes it's when we break the rules that those are the most exciting games of all and this is one of those games so game was played against national master Craig Stouffer and US Masters uh, the year 2000 and here we go so after e4 Stouffer played knight f6 the Alcan defense which is pretty much a rare guess now in uh, top level chess but it's a very difficult opening to play against because it creates immediate threats to, to White's pawn center. And it'll be classified as a hypermodern opening. And the hypermodern school came about in the 1920s, and the idea is to attack the, the enemy pawn center with pieces instead of pawns. Um, but it's a very risky strategy, and it takes a lot of experience to pull this off. Openings like the King's Indian Defense are also part of the, the hypermodern school, Nimzo Indian Defense as well. Um, but when you're learning chess, it's usually easier to just put pawns in the center, maybe play a Sicilian or, or e5. So knight f6 is a, definitely a more edgy uh, defense to choose. So of course I drove the knight away with e5 gaining time, and now this knight is just uh, in great danger. And if he tries to make a um, natural move, say knight e4, then um, he gets the knight basically gets trapped after d4. And, and f3 is coming. Of course, he can try and stop that a little bit, but the black is losing too much time there. So, so the theory basically is uh, knight d5 here. And you could see that if you wanted to drive the knight away with c4, you could and gain time. Um, this is a notorious variation of the Alakin called the Alakin chase variation after c4, knight b6, um, c5, or a4 first, and then threatening a5, winning the knight. So black would have to play a5. And then you could even play d4 here, which is more solid, or c5, letting the knight come back to d5, and then d4. And um, here I I wouldn't recommend this position for both sides. It's uh, completely irrational, actually. But you can see the, the troubles that the knight is uh, having in this position. Um, here, after knight d5, uh, the modern move, most solid move here would just be d4, and then the meet d6 with knight f3. This would be the classical variation of, of the Alcan defense. There's also uh, the four pawns variation, which is uh, very exciting and very risky for both sides. White takes over all the space, but you can see he has many weaknesses uh, because he's overextended himself, and this is uh, what black is looking for in the uh, the Alcan defense, the hypermodern school of chess, try and weaken the enemy center and then, and then strike back later. But of course, if you don't weaken the center, then the pawns just uh, overrun you. So, but back then I didn't know all of this theory. I was just learning, so um, I played uh, the more peace active move, knight to c3. Um, definitely not the best move because it lets the knight trade itself off, and well, you're letting black get rid of a, a piece that you could have gained time on with c4 or d4, as shown earlier. So, but knight c3 is a fun move, especially for a kid. And, of course, black took on c3. Now I could take with the d-pawn. If I wanted to, that would uh, hurt my pawn structure a little bit, but it would open up lines for my pieces, for my bishops. Um, so that would be more in the, in the gambit style, after d takes c3. Uh, play might continue d6, and then I can go for the trick bishop c4. Of course, if black were to play d takes c5, then we could uh, not trade queens here, but instead win the queen with bishop takes f7. A common tactic so but of course black doesn't have to fall for that so instead of d takes c3 i i played b takes c3 taking towards the center building my pawn center and well this position is roughly balanced black has got what he, he wanted out of the opening really white's weakened himself a little bit you can see black hasn't moved any of the the pawns yet but that's about to start uh really the ideal way for black to play here is to play d6 and uh attack the the pawn center, uh, maybe d6 immediately. Instead, he played g6, and of course, I played d4. 
Taking over the center. Again, he should play d6 here, I think, but bishop g7 also is okay. And I played bishop to d3, putting my bishop on the line directed at his king. So I have my sight set on the black king when he castles over there. Um, but he hasn't castled yet, so he really should again play d6. Um, and in that case, the best move there would be to play f4 to solidify my pawn center. But instead, he played c5. And again, with more experience, I would have played f4 in this position, but I was just learning, so I played knight f3, which is more logical of a move. Um, and now black is completely fine after d6, just breaking up my center. And you can see that the bishop on g7 is getting stronger. And uh, white's pawn center, well, is nearly collapsing. So black would have no problems there. It's not better, but uh, white doesn't have anything out of the opener. Uh, but instead, black followed the rules that, that were taught when we're beginners. Just get your pieces out and castle. And actually, I would say that castling is... Um, I'm not saying it's a mistake, but it's very risky, and it gives me a clear target to attack the king. So d6 would have been a more flexible move, and uh, definitely preferred. But uh, after castles, now black is playing into uh, my favorite type of chess back then, just uh, wild attacking. So after castles, let's see if you guys can uh, take a few seconds to find the move there. How would you play? So those of you who chose the caveman style h4, well, congratulations. That is the move I played. Mm, not saying it wins, but now black is in serious danger. h5 is coming. And you see, I did not castle, because then I would not have the opportunity to play h4. And so you do not always just castle immediately because sometimes when you keep your king in the middle your opponent is not sure what you're gonna do so you can keep him off guard whereas black has castled prematurely so now we have a clear target in mind of course I am breaking the rules I, I am not castling I'm leaving my king in the center so this is a very risky strategy and obviously castling uh, short you know I don't have any protection for my king over there and, um, Castling long isn't really an option, so so this attack on the on the black king needs to work, and black is going to start playing d6 and just um, open up the board quickly, and my king's going to be in danger. So the next few moves are, are crucial, and black played the right move d6. Of course, he should have done this earlier, and then he wouldn't be in any danger. But he's on the right track now, and I have to go I play h5. Threatening, of course, h takes g6, and a oh, quick checkmating attack. Just like Bobby Fischer said in the dragon, h4, h5, sack, sack, and mate. So that's similar to this in this situation. Um, Black played a good move, decent move. He played bishop to g4, and I need to play h takes g6, open up the game. So h takes g6. And now black played f takes g6, which looks strange at first, but he really can't open up the h file. Because after h takes g6, bishop h6, trading off his defender for that king, the bodyguard for the black king. And after bishop takes f3, then I don't even have to take back the bishop. I can play the crushing move, queen to d2 or queen c1. And um, black is basically checkmated. After bishop takes g2, Bishop takes g7. If king takes g7, queen h6 needs to mate. And after bishop takes h1, queen h6. And he can make an escape score with the king for maybe f6, but then, or f5, but then uh, e6 is crushing and it's mate in one. So, h takes g6 is too risky, so black ended up playing f takes g6. And now, in this position, I was very inspired. And I initially thought about rook takes h7 here. I thought my, I might be winning because after king takes h7, knight g5 check, winning the bishop with queen takes g4, and that would lead to a quick checkmate. But then, of course, I saw that he can play bishop takes knight on f3. And I calculated that for 
20, 30 minutes and just didn't work out. And black's defending in that position after rook takes h7, bishop takes f3. I looked at queen d2 there, king takes h7, and queen g5, very crazy variation, but it didn't quite work out. So I kept thinking, I wanted to make rook takes h7 work, but I couldn't see how it, it worked. And then finally, after 45 minutes of sitting in the position, I found uh, the only way to make it work. I'm not saying it's the best move, but uh, definitely the most creative move in, in the position. And you guys don't have to take 45 minutes, but take some time and uh, see if you find the move. So for those of you who found uh, the craziest move here, um, I'm a bit of embarrassed to say it myself that I played this. Uh, king to e2. Uh, either you should uh, start playing chess immediately or quit chess because it can go either way. If you if you play a move like king e2 uh, normally, then, well, you're going to get yourself into problems. Bringing your king into the middle of the board, pinning your king in the line of the black bishop, it just looks like a completely ridiculous move. I mean, is the point to play king e3 and king e4? We have no idea. But really, my idea here is not to play king e3, king e3 and king e4, of course, but something far more concealed. So if black had seen the threat, he should play a move like bishop to f5, which is counterintuitive, of course, because he, he, gets, he gets white out of the pin. But it stops the threat. And then I would play maybe rook h4 with the idea of queen to h1. So in fact, that is the idea of king to e2, to free up the first rank so that my queen could swing to the king side. But black did not see that, and instead he tried to trap my bishop with d5, which breaks principles on all, on all fronts, because with the kings in the center, you should open up, open up the board. Instead he closes it, of course he wants to play c4, but I'm never going to give him that chance. So after d5... Instead of playing a quiet move where there's no time for quiet moves now, I played the crushing rook takes h7. The idea, of course, is after king takes h7, queen h1, king g8, and then bishop takes g6 with a, a winning attack. So black, of course, had to play king takes h7. If he played c4, now I could play bishop takes g6. So king takes h7, queen h1. And now black, although he, he was a master, he was so rattled by the move king d2 that he blundered here with um, bishop to h5, and he just completely overlooked that I could play queen takes bishop check, winning a piece. And while well, the game was over after that, king g8, bishop takes g6, and that's just uh, going to be a quick mate. The game ended with rook takes f3, I don't even need to take that, just queen h7, king f8, and of course I could take the rook, but just bishop to h6 is just crushing. Um, and if he plays bishop takes h6, just queen h8 is mate, so instead he played rook f7. And um, the irony is that queen h8 is mate anyway. Uh, a beautiful pattern. A simple one, but beautiful. Um, so the ending of the game itself was quite simple because he hung, hung a piece under the pressure of, of the crazy move king to e2. But let's say that instead he played better defense, king to g8. And this is what I was thinking about before playing king e2, variations like this. Um, king g8, bishop takes g6. And there are a few defenses, but, well, there are not many because queen h7 is, is, is coming. But let's say he plays bishop takes f3, getting rid of the knight. Check, g takes f3. And um, again, the same variations, like if he plays rook f7, there's queen h7, check, king f8, bishop h6. So let's say he plays rook f6 to stop that, so he can play rook takes g6 in some lines. Um, queen h7, king f8, and now bishop h6 again, and of course queen h8 and queen takes g7 is threatened, so he must play rook takes g6, and just queen takes g6, threatening mate again, and after bishop takes h6, we do not need to take the bishop, instead we play the quiet move, crushing blow, e6, threatening queen f7 mate. Black has no choice but to play queen to e8. And then we play queen takes h6, check, king to g8, and then the beautiful finish, rook to g1, made possible by the fact 
that we played king t2 and now it's mate after rook g1 queen g6 rook takes g6 mate so i i hope you all enjoyed this game i i hope it makes you think about chess in um, different ways and i also hope that the next time you're thinking about playing king e2 in one of your games to uh, think twice before you do it and um disclaimer please if you play it please don't blame me for seeing this game like i said it only works in very rare occasions and and that's what makes uh, breaking the rules in chess special when it actually works it it, it can create a brilliancy thank you